Hello, everyone, and welcome to We Blame Harry Styles, a podcast dedicated to the work of musician, model, actor, and icon Harry Styles, as well as his numerous talented collaborators. This week in episode nine, we're going to talk about the news, followed by our Grammys predictions and a short game of Would You Press the Button? Yay, it's return. It's return. <laughs> My name is Keith. And I'm Gray. And who we blame Harry for this week? My newfound investment in the Grammy Awards. Oh my God. I did not follow them this closely before this year, and now it's all I care about. Wow. That is not shocking to me yeah. whatsoever. In a similar vein, I'm going to blame Harry for the fact that I'm going to get a free trial of YouTube TV this weekend, <laughs> specifically just to watch the Grammy Awards, because I do not have cable or access to live television. Oh my God. Listeners, please, you need to tell key to get an antenna i have been telling them okay so like uh, i love how you say that but then in our conversation you were like the reason why i don't have an antenna is because it's too complicated and i don't know which one i want it's and not you're like but you should get it because it's very easy <laughs> and i'm okay. like i'm receiving two different messages here okay so like i like using an antenna i just need to tape it to my wall because that's how my best friend has it set up and i just didn't do that and I didn't realize that was the appropriate setup for an antenna until I saw her doing it and it was like genius but uh, I personally am going to be watching the Grammy Awards eh, probably through a service called Lowcast but who's to say but yeah I uh, Key, Key and I have been enraptured in this debate for several days about like oh, where, where are you going to watch the Grammy Awards and key figure out options so youtube tv is the option uh which i just think is evil i think that if if, if you know network tv is gonna have this free option it definitely shouldn't be something that very few people like even know about and that it should be very easy to set up and i just feel like key i don't like capitalism very much <laughs> neither do i neither do i but here we are here we are here we are in 2021, uh, without cable, watching the Grammys through some strange YouTube-related streaming service. <laughs> Who would have predicted we would have been here in 2008? But here we are. Here we are. So now we're going to talk about the news before moving on to our main segment. So the official casting for more people from My Policeman has finally dropped. Uh, and I think accidentally sort of the <laughs> podcast maybe dropped the news about david dawson being cast as patrick before anyone else yeah uh, that's very bizarre <laughs> and i don't want to take credit for it because it's not like we're like the source but <laughs> uh we did say it so i guess we did called it we did Question say it we called it we're here and queer and proud uh, and so other <laughs> we're people excited. were excited. We're here, we're excited. We're here and we're excited and queer. Uh, so, <laughs> so other people who were um, cast in the movie. So there's going to be an older Harry played by Linus Roach. Who uh, has Harry's same birthday. Yeah. Uh, and Rupert Everett is playing older Patrick. And Gina McKee is playing older Marion. Yeah, so that's exciting. Yeah. I'm not so much aware of Linus Roach's career. I've, I've been seeing people throwing around different things that he's been in. Um, have not done a deep dive into his filmography as of yet. But um, I am uh, familiar with Rupert Everett and with Gene McKee. Um, yes. And some of their work primarily in rom-coms. Uh, Notting Hill comes to mind with Gene McKee. I'm sure she's been in other things, so I don't want to diminish that. And of course, R Rupert Everett I'm familiar with in a variety of respects, um, in, in, you know, a variety of British film across the past few decades. So it's 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 going to be exciting to see them working with Harry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very excited. I feel like definitely, you know, when you're talking about casting two actors as the same person, I definitely feel like Linus Roach and Harry Styles are closer than, you know, Matthew Perry and Zac Efron in Seventeen again. <laughs> so we're on the right path. Similar with, oh gosh, who was in Love and Mercy? It was Paul Dano and somebody yeah, else and, and they look john cusack and john cusack and they look nothing like each other That's i love like, how you remembered paul dano and forgot john cusack okay no so listen so that's because love and mercy is one of like my favorite movies in the world but specifically the beach boys parts are like my favorite 
movie in the world. So I, I mm-hmm. like imprinted on Paul Dano in that movie. And uh, the John Cusack parts, I mean, they're good, but I didn't imprint on John Cusack, you know? I imprinted That's on fair. Paul Paul Dano. And so... Uh, yeah, so I that that is that's definitely how I uh, how I remember one person. <laughs> I just can never remember the other. But uh, yeah, the, I feel like uh, Linus Roach and Harry Styles are closer than Paul Dano and John Cusack. So we're on the right path. Any other thoughts on that, Key? Not really. I'm just excited. Um, I don't know very much about David Dawson, so that's kind of exciting in and of itself um, to kind of see how the three of them, Emma, Harry, and him are going to work together. And yeah, I know people might be familiar with him through his work in The Last Kingdom, I believe it is. Um, And I think he's been in Peaky Blinders maybe as well. Um, And a couple other things here and there, The Hollow Crown. Um, So yeah, so maybe as time goes on, if I have some time, I will look back and give you some like because i don't you know i have no reference for his performances really um i'm just generally aware of him in the ether so maybe at some point i'll catch up on some of the things that he's been in but um yeah overall just kind of excited for filming to start because it's starting relatively soon um yeah it's an exciting time i saw a fan cam of him from (laughs) the show luther wow there's already a fan cam yeah there's a david dawson fan cam Love that. Of him from the show Luther. So I guess some people must have liked him on that (laughs) show. He and I were talking about how funny it is that they're starting to be like fan cams for fictional characters. Like, Oh, yeah. So maybe this is just me. I've never been on like Twitter fandom for other things other than Harry. This is like the one like quote unquote fandom like Twitter account I've ever had. So my frame of reference for Stan Twitter has always been celebrities. Um, and so my, like, whenever I see people going like, oh, hey, bestie, and like all the, like, the tongue in cheek kind of like Stan Twittery type things, I, that's very associated to me with Stan Twitter and with celebrity culture. And so when I see that stuff for fictional characters, it never fails to crack me <laughs> up when people are like, oh, Tony Stark, Stan Wanda Maximoff instead. And it's like a Wanda Maximoff fan cam. Like, it's just so funny. To me. <laughs> so that's not really super relevant, but you know, it is amusing to me personally. Oh, it's, it's extremely amusing to me also. Okay, so now I think before we move on to our main segment, Key is going to lead us through what the Grammys will look like because there was this great article in Rolling Stone about them. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> Ben Winston, who's producing the Grammys and who I'm sure many listeners will be familiar with as a friend of Harry's, and as the director of several of One Direction's music videos. Thank you, Ben Winston, for your contributions to the Harry Verse. Um, and, okay, sorry, I just got this vision of like into the Spider Verse, but it's <laughs> Harry Styles, and I just would like someone to greenlight that project. But anyway, okay, yeah. So- but like, but like, so into the Harry Verse, so it'd be, I mean, people sort him into his eras anyway. Like, so like, would into the Harry Verse collect like prince hair harry and long hair harry and like short hair harry and like- yes and then for flavor there's also like the nerdy harry from the best song ever music oh, video Mar- marcel yeah yes marcel is there yeah i can i can see it in my mind so clearly um <laughs> but yes so what viewers can expect from this upcoming Sunday, according to Ben Winston and this Rolling Stone article, is, quote, a multi-stage audience-free show that highlights the year's creative triumphs, social justice movements, as well as COVID-19's impact on the arts. Um, Winston hints at several, quote, unbelievably powerful performances on the slate, adding that the Grammys absolutely are acknowledging what's happened in the country in the last year. Um, so I thought that that was kind of an important quote to pull out because I think it gives me a good sense of like what they're trying to achieve with the show on Sunday night. And yeah, and then kind of going into that, Ben also highlighted that they're going to try and focus on and, and, you know, bring to light some independent venues as a launch pad for em- emerging musicians. So the Grammys are going to feature some guest spots from owners and workers at iconic American concert venues. Employees will come on camera to tell us a little bit more about their venue and then present some of the awards. So that's something that we can look forward to seeing on Sunday. Any thoughts on that? I just think it sounds cool. I'm, I'm very curious about you know, how all this is going to work. You know, they have like a very big vision, which is interesting considering that my vision for this year 
was expecting it to be kind of like small, you know, like it's just, it's yeah. just kind of like uh, all the award shows are doing things very differently. Uh, and you never know, like, you know, the Golden Globes had like, you know, Zoom meeting energy. So I wasn't yeah. sure if that was what was going to be this, but it seems like they have something very different in mind. Yeah, I'm really curious too. That's a good point because I know like, for example, Steven Soderbergh is producing the Oscars, <laughs> which I think I'm really excited for um, and to see what, what that is going to, how that's going to turn out. Um, yeah, the, the Golden Globes had Zoom energy, the Emmys, um, I think did something pretty interesting and successful. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see. And, and especially because this is so dependent on performances. Um, there's like a million of them. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so that is going to be a lot different than some of the award shows we've seen um, this year so far. And and I haven't seen, at least, I, I didn't attentively watch the Golden Globes because I don't have cable, but I checked in. Um, and I, I, I'm not aware of any other award shows doing this thing of highlighting um, some venues and kind of like the impact mm -hmm. of COVID in this specific way. So I think that that's a cool idea. We'll have to kind of see. Um, how it works as part of a live show, but I'm but I'm interested to see that. Yeah, I, I it's it's fun that they're ambitious. I do like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, do you want to talk about the more nitty gritty parts of the of production? Yeah. So Ben mentioned that a team of COVID safety officers oversaw the production setup, which was good to hear. Um, artists are going to enter the stage from different directions to minimize contact, and then each artist has their own backstage area. And yeah, so he said the show is going to involve five stages of the same size and shape, four of which are for performances and one of which is for presenters. Uh, the stages are organized in a circle facing one another, and the crew members are going to work from the middle of the set. Um, so people are going to perform while the other three or four artists on their stages watch, applaud, and enjoy. And then as soon as that one finishes, the next one goes, the next one goes, etc. And so I found this to be very intriguing. And I'm really mm -hmm. curious to see how it's going to work. It seems like there's going to be a lot of moving parts. But I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in a normal award show too. So, um, you know, there's opportunities definitely for technical snafus. But there would be too if it was a Zoom type event. So I'm curious to see how it turns out. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely fascinating. I don't think any of the other award shows have done something like this. So I'm yeah, very intrigued. I yeah, I think the big question is, like, we're still wondering, because they said that there's going to be pre-recorded performances too, right? I, I am still wondering if Harry's going to attend. Yeah, so we had this quote here. Um, Performances will be a mix of live and pre-recorded. A fully live show would involve too many crew members moving sets and risking close contact, but the whole thing is intended to feel completely live. Winston challenges viewers to try and guess which sets are pre-recorded. He designed them to be difficult to tell. So that's interesting because does that mean that, say, some of the sets are pre-recorded, but then those people will still be attending, like that, there be, that they will be at the red carpet, so you won't be able to tell? It, it's unclear. And we're, we're going to get into this a little bit later. I almost prefer pre-recorded just because I get anxious and I like with things like <laughs> SNL, I get very like anxious hand covering my eyes with live stuff. So I would almost prefer pre-recorded if that still meant that we'd get, you know, possibly multiple looks, possibly red carpet. But if pre-recorded performance means none of that, obviously I would prefer live. But yeah, interested yeah. to see. Yeah, I'm interested to see too. Okay, so now I think it's time to move into our main segment. So do you want to tell the audience a little bit more about how we're going to structure this main segment and what we're going to chat about? Yeah, so basically we're just going to do some Grammys predictions. Um, we're going to start by kind of talking about what our ideal Grammy scenario would be or would have been. Um, and then kind of talking about like what we want out of this award show, what's going to make us the most satisfied coming away from it this Sunday night. Um, and then, yeah, some, some more specific predictions of the different categories that Harry's nominated for specifically. We're not, there's like so many Grammys categories and, you know, we want this to be kind of like a lower key, shorter episode. So we're not going to do predictions for all the Grammys categories, but um, yeah, we'll get into some predictions for the categories that Harry is nominated for. Um, then we're going to get into some other predictions and questions about like what he might wear, what his performance might be like, things like that. Um, and yeah, then we're going to get into some listener predictions that you've all sent in to us. So thank you so much for doing that. And we'll get to those later in the show. So uh, for those wondering, unfortunately, we will not be giving an extended opinion on uh, Taylor Swift being nominated for her song written for the cat soundtrack, Beautiful <laughs> Ghosts, which was nominated for a Grammy Award. <laughs> That's wild. I've never heard it. Yeah, you don't need to. 
It's fine. All right. All right. Yeah. So kind of starting out, what do you think would have been your ideal Grammy scenario? So that could be like, you know, COVID never happened. What's your ideal performance scenario? It could be like, what's your ideal nominations that Harry would have received or you think he deserved? Like, what's your ideal Grammy scenario that you don't think we're going to get or that we haven't gotten? Okay. Picture a world without COVID-19. Harry and I are married. (laughs) I I am his plus one to the Grammy Awards. (laughs) And, and he is nominated in every category. <laughs> wow. Dream big, as they say. <laughs> um, okay. So ideal in this day and age is quite a loaded question. But I think that this year, within the context of this year, I do wish that he had been nominated for album of the year um, mm. and record of the year. I do think that he was definitely stepped in those categories. And um, I think that you and I are in kind of similar agreement that like it would have been ideal for him to get nominated in those plus best pop album, but then only win best pop album. (laughs) Yeah, best pop vocal album. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, my ideal scenario in terms of nominations would have been a nomination for best album or for album of the year, a nomination for um, record of the year and win in best pop vocal album or um, pop vocal performance. I, I I think, you know, when we talk about progression, like I think, mm-hmm. you know, Fine Line was extremely successful. Um, it's one of the top albums of the last year in terms of popular success. It was critically successful. Um, and I think, yeah, it stands out as, as something that, you know, was extremely successful and popular during during the past year, during the pandemic. So I, I would have really liked to see it um, nominated for Album of the Year and recognized in that way. I also thought it was kind of gratifying, though, that it was generally considered a snub. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So that was kind of nice to see that, like, critically, people seemed to kind of notice that. Um, obviously, The weekend was the other, like, huge snub that people came away oh, from these nominations yeah. saying, like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, but um, but yeah, so it was nice to kind of see the acknowledgement that 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 was a snub. But yeah, in my ideal scenario, mm-hmm. he would have gotten the nomination for album of the year, would have got a nomination for record of the year. And I don't think in my ideal scenario, again, it would have been great if he won, I guess. But I, I kind of think of it as like, it, it's almost better. It's I, better. Listeners don't comfort me. No, 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 no. It's better right now. Like, like the ideal situation would be nominating him so he would get in the mindset it's it's the 30 year plan like the 30 year yeah. plan for somebody like harry does not really involve winning an album of the year right now it involves winning album of the year for harry styles three <laughs> yes or four in my ideal scenario it happens for hs4 if you want to hear my in-depth predictions for harry's <laughs> year plan uh check out our cheap with kindness episode um but yeah i think like in my head, there's like a, a natural progression of 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 these things, and, and I think it would have been really nice to see the industry kind of acknowledge Harry in the general categories. And it's a shame that that didn't happen. I do still think, you know, we can see this progression from the mm-hmm. fact that he was even nominated for Grammys at all this year, which he wasn't for HS1, um, and so that's nice to see. But yeah, I think that yeah, I would have I would have really liked to see him nominated in the general categories. It's just a shame that's that didn't happen. But I'm I'm thrilled that he did get three nominations. Um, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it is. Uh, ideal to because this is this is different than my predictions. So my ideal would be um, that he would win best pop vocal and best pop solo for this year. But I don't mm. um, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that with happen. predictions. But, yeah, but, but that yeah. that would be my idea was would be he would win those two in this timeline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my ideal then would be that he would win Best Pop Vocal Album. And I look forward to seeing more nominations for him in the future, which I have absolutely no doubt yes. we will see down the line. So. Yes. So yeah, so then um, in terms of like what would you want out of the awards show or like what would make you satisfied on Sunday night, the award show's over, like you're feeling like, wow, that was really good. Like that's what I wanted to see. Like what, and specifically, you know, gearing it towards Harry himself. Okay, so picture Harry enters the red carpet in a floor length ball gown and Harris Reed platform boots. And wow. a uh, vision. Uh huh, a vision. Uh, Harry performs and he's wonderful. He performs with the Free Nationals. 
because that was hinted. We'll talk about that in a second. And then I'm just happy that he's nominated. I would love for him to win. Like I said, I would love for him to win any of these categories. I don't know if I think that's going to happen, but to make me satisfied, him winning at least one of these. (laughs) How about you, Key? Yeah, so I think basically what's going to make me satisfied on Sunday night is him knocking it out of the park with a performance that's Mm -hmm. really good and everybody coming away being like, wow, that was a really good performance. He nailed that and he looks great. That's really what would satisfy me coming out of the awards show on Sunday night. Um, Again, yeah, I'd love to see him win one of these awards, but that's not necessary. I don't think for me to feel satisfied with the event. Um, I'm not going to feel crushed or disappointed if that isn't what happens. Um, I just really would love for him to have a great performance, have a great red carpet look. Yeah, that's basically what's going to make me satisfied coming out of this event. Now, since you asked this question, I feel like I've been holding this in. I... I'm going to try to speak this into existence. Harry will drop a new song on Sunday and he will premiere with the Grammy Awards. <laughs> wow, that's a big, wow. I mean, I would love that. I'd be obsessed with that. Harry, please do that. But I think he's going to perform Watermelon Sugar. I'm speaking it into existence. I mean, listen, I'm not an anti-Watermelon Sugar person. I don't know the people who have been slandering it. I, I am against, I'm, I'm phobic of that. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yes. I agree. I love watermelon <laughs> sugar too, but it's not for us. It's like when we talk about, you know, Harry repeating certain anecdotes in profiles and us as, yes. as you know, fans, like with a podcast about him, like we read them all. So to us, it's like a little <laughs> repetitive, but then for like the general public, it's not. It's the same with this, right? Like to us, him performing watermelon sugar is a little bit less exciting because we've seen him do it a lot, but you know, obviously it's, it's going to be great either way. And I'm excited to see it regardless of what it is. It would be really fun for him to sing Triple with Kindness since that was technically the last thing that he dropped, but who knows? Mm. I don't know. I don't know if I think he's going to sing Watermelon Sugar because he has done it many times. And I know that that's like his thing and it's what, what he's nominated, nominated for. for. I'd love to hear Adore You. Yeah. Oh my God. I would love to hear Adore You. We'll see. Um, okay. So now... Uh, I think it would be good to talk about the predictions. So, Harry was nominated in three categories, uh, as we've been alluding to. He's nominated in Best Pop Solo Performance, Best Pop Vocal Album, and Best Music Video. So, let's just run down the list. Uh, Key, what are your thoughts on the Best Pop Solo Performance category? Yeah, so his fellow nominees are Yummy by Justin Bieber, Say So by Doja Cat, Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish, Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa, Watermelon Sugar, Harry Styles, and Cardigan by Taylor Swift. Um, So that's that category. Justin Bieber needs to be stopped. I can't handle this. (laughs) Yeah, I don't understand that. He's the clear outlier in this category. Like, What's he doing here? (laughs) Yeah, I, I don't get it. So remove him from the pack here. Um, other than that, I've heard all these songs, um, and I didn't, this is the other thing, right, I made, so for best music video, I made sure to watch all the videos to prep for this episode. For the songs and the albums, I, I'd heard all these already, which is kind of cool, um, and it says something about these songs and these albums that, that, you know, just as not, like, a devoted fan of these other artists, but as somebody who's, like, aware of music and, you know, listens to things when they come across my, you know, social media accounts or, or listens to the radio or whatever. I'd heard all these songs already. Um, actually, Yummy, I had only heard because I looked it up specifically because I <sighs> was curious about it, and that turned into a whole thing. But the rest of them I'd all heard um, independently, and I liked, I like all these songs. Um, there's not a song on here that I don't like. Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't think Harry's I, like again. I I apologize to our listeners. I hope you don't can think that we're being downers here, but this is just like our honest thoughts. I don't think Harry's yeah. gonna win this category. Um, I would love to see that, but I don't think he's gonna win. I think probably "Don't Start Now" by Dua Lipa it emerges for me as what might win this category. Yeah, I think that Dua is probably gonna win, but "Watermelon Sure" is definitely my favorite song in this category. Not even just because it's Harry. I just think it's the best. I just think it's the best one. I think Cardigan is a, like a little bit of a strange nomination here. Maybe this speaks yeah. to the time in which the nominations came out because Cardigan, I, I know, was the lead single off of Folklore. Folklore, Folklore is like such a body of work um, that it's hard to kind of individual tracks off of that album don't necessarily emerge for me as much as it exists as one body of work. But Cardigan is definitely not the song that emerges off of 
it for me, but it's the lead single. So I guess it makes sense that that's why it's on here. There's like such a conversation about categorization here, right? Uh, which I guess we could diverge because I'm actually, this is something that really intrigued me about the awards. Uh, do you mind if I go off in a little like tangent about categorization of these songs? Um, so I was, I was talking with a friend today um, just about these categories. Uh, and she was talking about how for HS1, Harry submitted it as best rock album. And that was part of the reason they stepped in. They didn't want to nominate it as, you know, a rock album. Um, they wanted, they, they kind of put him into being a pop artist. And so I just find that, like looking at this pop solo and pop album uh, to be really fascinating because Folklore is a folk album. <laughs> and, yeah, the Cardigan isn't like, you don't listen to that song and yeah. you're like, wow, what a pop song. And I think it's often like a lot of Fine Line is a rock album. Like it is, it's pop and rock, but like. It toes that line. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it toes the line very, very much. And so I, I find this categorization very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I and I guess I find it interesting because I think more than a, the actual music that's in this category, it says about like what kind of people the Recording Academy thinks should be in this category. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and and I think to a certain extent it it does interest me, but I think also to a certain extent like genre distinctions are blurry anyways. Yeah. So I think it kind of makes sense to allow people to kind of submit them as they choose yeah. and, and categorize themselves because I, I think there is, like, what is pop? And that it changes so much over time, mm -hmm. uh, what what falls under that umbrella. So I'm certainly not an expert in the differences in those genre distinctions. And so, yeah, but it's an interesting thing to observe for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's just very interesting to see because, like, in other years, putting Taylor Swift and Gaga in, like, best pop vocal album category would make total sense. Like, if this was, like, 1989. Oh, yeah. Total pop. But, like, Folklore, it, it, it's just very, it's very funny to me to see that competing against Chromatica. <laughs> yeah, they're very, they're very divergent in that way. For it's, sure. it's it's very it's just it's just very funny to me and I'm, I'm not like i'm not shading taylor swift or anything I actually i like i like folklore it's just it's just very funny that folklore and chromatica are like are in competition right now in the same yeah, category very different albums yeah um so talk about pet's best pop vocal album what do you think is gonna win there Yes, yeah, so the other nominees in this category are Changes by Justin Bieber, Chromatica by Lady Gaga, Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa, Fine Line by Harry Styles, and Folklore by Taylor Swift. So again, with the exception of Changes by Justin Bieber, I've listened to all these albums. I might not have listened to all of Chromatica front to back, but I've heard most of it and I've heard all of the other albums. Um, and I like all of them. So that's always good. I mean, I get like, I, I threw one out. So there's like a... I can't quite say that I like all the albums because I already feel yeah. that. But um, of the of most of these, I like. Um, I again apologize for being a downer to our listeners, but I don't think that Harry is going to win this category. But I guess if if he was going to win one of these awards, maybe this was is the one that I would pick. Um, this is the one yeah. I would want him to win the most um, because again, Fine Line to me, like I said about folklore, kind of emerges for me as a body of work, and it's such mm -hmm. a strong album together that this is the one that i would prefer he win for i think probably folklore is gonna win this maybe with yeah. future nostalgia edging it out in number two but i'm you know i'd love to see harry win this <laughs> i would love to see harry win it too um i feel like i don't know i have loved lady gaga ever since i was young and i <laughs> Chromatica on re-listen has only it just improves each time for me so the fact that Harry Styles and Lady Gaga are nominated in the same category first off just makes my gay little heart sing oh my god I love it so much yeah um, that is great and second the fact that they're competing and it's pretty known among people who speculate that neither of them is going to win is making me so mad <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel How? that. Oh, I'm sad. And it's no, like, like I have listened to all of it too, um, except for <laughs> Beaver. Uh, and <laughs> Who had the audacity to complain about his record being considered pop. 
that's like like I don't want to go into a whole thing there, but that's just something that happened that is very. Do you uh, have any? Do Do you think that like there are any like closeted believers who listen to our podcast who are going to? I don't know. I don't have like any like I. (laughs) I don't care enough to like upset our listeners with my Justin Bieber opinions truly, but I. I just that that was very in poor taste it, it, to me. Yeah, it was in poor taste for sure. That several people got snubbed, particularly that the weekend got snubbed, and then Justin yeah, Bieber came I out know. and was like, "The nominations I received like weren't in the right genre category." It was just very in poor taste to me. But you know, yeah, I don't know. It's just ugh, yeah, the whole thing. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, in my in my ideal world, in my head. uh it would be a fierce competition between Lady Gaga and Harry Styles at this. Uh, or it, at the very least, it would be a fierce competition between Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. We are in the worst timeline where he is in at least third, if not fourth place here. So I would love an upset for him. Frankly, I would love an upset for Gaga too. I think that you know either of them winning would be amazing. But uh, this is not the We Blame Lady Gaga podcast, so <laughs> we'll have to move on. Uh, yeah, to best yeah. music video. And so the nominations are Brown Skin Girl by Beyonce, Life is Good by Future featuring Drake, Lockdown by Anderson Pack, Adore You by Harry Styles, and Goliath by Woodkid. So what are your thoughts on this category? So if Beyonce doesn't win, it will be a crime. I'm sorry. <laughs> Harry, you're up against Beyonce. And like, like the fact that you're up against Beyonce is amazing. Good job. Oh, like, it's an honor. Yeah, th- this category I think is really interesting because there's a lot of different political themes running through certain other music videos. And so I think that Harry's is definitely like... Look, I, I don't think Harry's going to win this category either. I don't particularly want him to win. Right. Yeah, Harry, don't win this. <laughs> <laughs> I love Adore You. I love the Adore You music video. Um, But I think Brown Skin Girl by Beyonce should win. But I, I would encourage our listeners, if you haven't, to watch all the other music videos in this category. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked pretty much all of them. Um, I thought they were all interesting. Goliath by Woodkid mm-hmm. I thought was cool. Um, But yeah, Brown Skin Girl is a really great music video and it's definitely so watch gorgeous. it if you haven't watched it. It's really beautiful. So, and Beyonce also like has the name recognition in, the, in this category and yeah. And, um, yeah, I think I think this is kind of a lock, but we'll we'll have to see. But yeah, yeah I actually felt like I I actually hadn't I hadn't seen it before we started doing our compilation for this episode because I just hadn't uh, and when I saw that Harry was up against Beyonce, I was like, oh, I don't know if, if Harry should win. And then I watched it and I was like, Harry definitely should not win. <laughs> and again, like, look, it's it's very hard to, for me particularly, to be objective because, like, obviously I have, like, an emotional attachment to Harry Styles as an artist. We have mm-hmm. a podcast about him, right? And, and I love Adore You and I think that's such a good music video. And Dave Myers like, did such a good job on that music video. But, um, but yeah, I think Beyonce should should win in this category and she will probably win in this category and so that is what emerges for me but for it's that. an honor it's an honor to be nominated all right it so is now such that, an honor now that we've established that harry is not going to win anything <laughs> i'm uh, sorry you guys <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think this through because we're doing like a whole episode on Grammy predictions. So I hope this isn't like a massive downer, but I, I think it's all, sometimes it's nice to go into things with low expectations than yeah. be surprised. But like I said, like my satisfaction with this awards show is definitely not contingent on him winning any of these awards. This is the first time he's ever been nominated for any Grammys. Like it's very cool to be nominated in these categories with these huge artists. Absolutely. And it's not kind of, it's not really like the Oscars where like, if you're an actor and like, you don't win, like you don't do anything, like Harry's still going and he's still going to perform a song and he's going to wear awesome clothes. And yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. So I I don't really like, um, I'm a little bummed that he's not going to win, but I feel pretty confident that he will win some other time. And (laughs) if there is an upset in pop vocal album, for Harry Styles. Oh, we're going to be so lit. <laughs> or Lady Gaga. Uh, <laughs> I will be so happy. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, but, you know, looking at these categories, I must ask before we move on to our other predictions, is is there any point in pitting beautiful women against each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I think we've said all we need to say. I mm-hmm. think it'd be amazing to see an upset in, in, in these categories. But I, I think, you know, with the word on the street and with 
<laughs> what 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 people are saying and and what the predictions are and and what the what the general categories are i, I think you know it's it seems a, a narrative seems to emerge around these categories but would love to be surprised and yes. look forward to the show regardless yes absolutely okay so now we're going to move on to non-award predictions so first key if harry attends and is sitting with people who do you think will be at his table who first off who do you think he'll be sat with? And second off, what would be your ideal table? Is it like tables? Aren't they like, I'm, I'm on the setup. I'm not exactly, I, I know I read a whole thing on it. I'm not like entirely clear in the setup. I don't think they're going to be sitting around a table, but I could be wrong. But regardless. Okay, just in, in your brain, just picture them at the same table anyway. Like a Brits style <laughs> table. They're all there. And whatever's in our imagination will be probably more fun than reality, but for now let's just who's harry hanging out with at there what what who would you like him to hang out with who do you think he's going to hang out with i really have absolutely no insight in who he's going to hang out with <laughs> so i don't really know what i can contribute on that front but i would love harry to interact at this show with megan v stallion i'd love to see him have on-screen moments with bad bunny um this might be an unpopular opinion among our listeners. I'd love to see him have some on-screen interaction with Taylor Swift. Uh, I like Taylor Swift. She's an artist that I like, so that emerges from that for me. So those kind of three people emerge for me from this list. But um, yeah, I'm excited regardless. Yeah, uh, I also would love to see Harry interact with Megan D. Stallion. He has been liking enough of her photographs on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to see him interact with uh, Bad Bunny as well, and I too would be here for some Halo interaction. It's been a while. Yeah, who else from the list would I like him to hang out with? Haim, maybe? Haim, yeah, that would be cool. I think they're friends, so yeah, I do that'd be think fun they, to see. They are friends, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. I think. What do we think that Harry will wear? Now we discussed this a little bit last week. Do you still feel similarly different? Yeah, I'm feeling good about a Stephen Stokey Daily custom look. Mm -hmm. Um, Me maybe too. for the performance look, I am feeling good about a Harris Reed makeup mm -hmm. look potentially potentially a Harris Reed collection look, but that's kind of what emerges for me. I'd love to see mm -hmm. a dress moment. I'd love to see some, like one of Harris's designs in his collection is kind of like, it's not a dress, it's like a suit and a dress at the same time. It's like hard mm -hmm. to describe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love to see something like that. But um, I'm so looking forward, like if, it, if he does perform in a Stephen Stokey Daily look, I'm just super excited to see what that would be. I'd love to be surprised. So Harris's collection we've already seen, so I'd love something new that's custom. Yeah, absolutely. I am wondering if like there will be any any Gucci. Uh, I think mm. that if he doesn't do a Harris Reed custom, the red carpet probably will be Gucci. Um, but it could be some other third thing. I am curious about his Stephen Stokey Daily stage wear because Stokey Daily is such like a newer designer that like it's really a mystery of like what his upcoming stuff will look like for yeah me. it's hard to know what expect what to expect yeah. so it's like an exciting mm -hmm. unknown quantity which is what makes me want it but um yeah happy either way excited to see how it's gonna go obviously mm -hmm. one of the best things about being harry styles fan is that we know that He's not going to be rolling up to this event wearing a black suit with a black tie. So it's always mm -hmm. fun to anticipate the ways in which he might surprise us. And if he does show up to the Grammys in a black suit and a black tie, you can point out this audio back to me and say, you're a fool. But I don't think that's something that's going to happen. I think we're pretty safe at this point. No, we're not manifesting that. It's fine. The things that I manifest into reality seem to become real. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And I haven't manifested that. So performance-wise, it seems like perhaps Harry may perform with the Free Nationals again. They're, yeah, they're, definitely at least the singers from the Free Nationals. They're teasing it hard. <laughs> yeah, so two of the two of the singers th from the Free Nationals, India Sean and Lay, um, I assume that this person's name is Lay because this is their display <laughs> name on Twitter. Um, 
the two singers from the Free Nationals posted little teases, um, little emojis in response to somebody saying, um, please do backing vocals for Harry Grammy's performance. So I think it's pretty pretty much a lock that they'll be doing backing vocals for Harry, which is great because we loved so much their work with him when he performed at the Jingle Bell Ball. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in terms of other performance stuff, like we kind of touched on before, I, I, I my prediction would be that he's going to perform Watermelon Sugar. That is what was in the mm-hmm. ad. Um, like Grace said before, I'd be thrilled if we did a new song, but I don't know if it's the time. I don't know if it's the time to to debut something. Um, so yeah, Watermelon Sugar is my prediction. I would love to hear Adore You, but I'm happy either way. I think they'll knock it out of the park regardless, so yeah. Yeah, I would love to manifest Adore You, but it might be Watermelon Sugar. I don't know. Maybe Harry will add choreography to Watermelon Sugar. <laughs> That'd be an interesting twist. It would be very interesting. Okay, so uh, I think that wraps up some of what we had to say. Um, We also had some listeners submit predictions. A number of you guys submitted similar predictions. So if I like consolidate predictions or I don't read off the whole message that you know you sent, I'm sorry, but we're just, you know, just trying to get through life. So several people seem to believe that Dua Lipa would sweep the awards. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know about that. Where's that coming from? I feel very strongly about Taylor Swift and folklore going yeah. into this awards show. So I'm not sure about that. I don't know. I I guess I don't know enough about Dua Lipa, but they seem very confident. So maybe they know something that I don't. <laughs> um if you know something that I don't, tell me. <laughs> 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 yeah, some, some insider Grammy voters here. No, I feel, yeah. you know, that's a valid opinion, um, but I feel pretty strongly about Taylor Swift's mm-hmm. uh, chances in the in the general categories, but who knows? Um, yeah. I, I mean, they're, they're both nominated for a ton of stuff, so it wouldn't be a shock to me if she got a lot of the awards, but a sweep to me is too strong of a word. I think folklore mm-hmm. is too strong for that for that possibility. Yeah, I, I do too. I don't think that, I, I think that definitely folklore will win some things. Uh this person had take that I'm not sure I agree with on his outfit. They said, I'd like for Harry to wear a cool dress to the Grammys, but he'll probably wear a colorful blouse and some black high-waisted pants, if I'm being honest. I would like to submit two outfits. There's an option for at least two outfits, so he could wear both. Um, Yeah, I mean, either of those I'd be down for. Who I, I trust Harry Lambert so much. Like, the mm. amount of trust that I've placed in Harry it's Lambert. It's too much. <laughs> like, I just don't think that he can go wrong. So I'm, it's just not something that I'm worried about at all. It's like, mm-hmm. again, I get very anxious over, like, live performances, so I am actually, like, worried about the performance itself because even though that doesn't make logical sense and that he's, he's great at all of his live performances and... To my knowledge, like, all of his televised performances are great. Like, still in my head, I'm like, oh, no. Like, it's a live performance, and I get a little worried. But the I'm not <laughs> – that feeling is not in my head at all when it comes to the outfit. I'm like, that's just something I'm, like, solely 100% excited about, and I know that they'll nail it. Now, here is possibly the babiest prediction. Uh, <laughs> my prediction is his hand will shake like it usually does when he's nervous, and I'll cry. Aww. Well, I know. Me too, person who submitted that. Me too. I bet his hand will, and he'll adjust his his headset in his ear. <laughs> wow, what a specific prediction. Uh-huh. Uh, well, he does it. That's that's one of his performing tics. My favorite is um, when he went to BBC One, and he had the big over-the-ear headphones, and he's used to fiddling with, like, the little ones oh, yeah. inside of his ear, but he's, he doesn't have that, so he just keeps shifting it off of his ear. <laughs> <laughs> and back on because he remembers oh, I can't hear if this is on <laughs> he's so cute I hate it um, so he'll do one of those two I can uh, see it I can see that happening I can see it very clearly uh, here's a fun prediction Mitch as Harry's plus one that yeah I wouldn't have Mitch at the top of my list of who is most likely to be Harry's plus one but I would love to see it um, I don't anticipate him having a plus one. That's my prediction, but you're valid, Anon, whoever sent this in, and I'd you're love valid. to see that. This person also wanted a medley of performances, like Watermelon and Jory and maybe True People's Kindness, which is, like, very ambitious. Yeah, I just don't know if they'd, like, let 
him do this. I don't uh, like. I don't know if I've watched the Grammys enough times. I have watched the Grammys in the past. I'm I don't watch it every year, so I don't know like how often this happens. But I, it's not something that I anticipate. But it would mm-hmm. certainly be a fun little surprise. Yeah, and then the final one here. I think Harry is favorite for music video. I yeah, don't think so. I, you know, <laughs> we we already covered this, but. That Beyonce nomination is just a tough nut to crack. Like when you're nominated against Beyonce, and it, and the Grammys historically have not given Beyonce like the respect and recognition that she deserves. So so they had better. Yeah. So so like it's not like I'm not saying this to mean that like Beyonce always wins every award. Therefore, she's gonna win this award because historically that hasn't been the case. But I just think that that's unlikely but i again adore use a great music video and mm-hmm. no disrespect no, to dave not. myers who's also nominated for a different music video yes um, as well but um yeah i i this is not my prediction going into the grammys but who knows mm-hmm. we shall have to see so thank you all for sending in these predictions yeah thank you so much for sending them in we appreciate listener feedback um it's just nice to hear from you guys so now we're going to move into a little game of would you press the button which is a game where you get your wish with a twist. Now, on previous episodes, we played this game, so you may already be familiar. But if you're not, uh, just an example. So, Key, would you press the button if you could get your favorite food delivered to your house whenever you wanted for the rest of your life, but it could only be that food? Would you press the button? Yeah, totally. Good. Yeah, I mean, because it's not like I j- only have to eat that one food for the rest of my life and nothing else right i just can get that delivered no, you yeah can, totally you, you, you can only <laughs> no, you can only eat that food the rest then, of your life then no i would not no okay okay um <laughs> that'll be a lot of qdoba nachos oh qdoba nachos are good um yeah so basically what happened was uh we were thinking about you know just a little extension of this episode and we had some questions that were from listeners that were, they were sent in when we were already recording the last Would You Press the Button episode. So I opened up our Tumblr account and there were like three there. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to save these. Uh, and then I wanted to use them. So I'm so excited to be able to unearth them because they're really fun. And whoever sent these in, thank you. Your contributions did not go unnoticed. We've been literally saving these to use them. Uh, Key has also made up some for me to answer. Yeah, mine are Grammy related. Yes. Okay. So Key, Key is unaware of these ones. These are not Grammy related. Uh, okay. So the first one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Harry plays Elizabeth Bennet in a gay adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, but Darcy is played by Owen Wilson. Would you press the button? Wow. <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of information to take in at once. Um, I think I would. You I would. think I like Owen Wilson. I so like I Owen I would Wilson. Do that. I like Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson has hidden depths. He helped write some of Wes Anderson's movies, you know, Owen Wilson. So I'd, I'd kind of be down. Yeah, I just saw him in The Royal Tenenbaums. He was great. You um, just watched Royal Tenenbaums? Yeah. I, I just listened to a podcast about The Royal Tenenbaums. <laughs> Uh, well, I didn't just watch it. I watched it like last weekend. I think that I told you, but I also might have been. I don't think you drunk. did because I just listened to like like around that same time, around a week ago. I listened to a podcast about the Royal Tenenbaums. So, listeners, I would recommend the Royal Tenenbaums. I might have been too drunk to text you about it. That's so funny. I... <laughs> no, it's wow. really good. It's it's a great movie. Um, but yeah, so I on track yes i like owen wilson too i would definitely press the button for this one i think that he might be actually really good darcy yeah i don't know if (laughs) darcy is who i would think of to cast owen wilson as but in the framing of this question i think yes, i would press the button interesting okay uh so now uh let's alternate what do you have for me key all right so would you press the button if Harry wears a Harris Reed makeup look to the Grammys red carpet, but the red carpet look is only so-so? Mm. Is the makeup look like really good though? Yes. Well, okay, sure. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I don't know. I seem to have a power for manifesting things into existence and this is too <laughs> no, close. No, don't manifest No, this. I'm not manifesting this. No, I'm, I, I, I would not press the button. I want both the look and the makeup look to be good. So no, I don't press the button. Do you hear... 
Do you hear that, God? I don't, I don't <laughs> press it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't want to manifest that, so I'm not going to press that. Mm -hmm. We are not in the business of manifesting evil on the podcast. <laughs> oh, no. My, my next one might be rough then, but we'll get there when we get there. Okay. Okay. So we get... Harry Styles 3 in March, but he never performs a fine line song that isn't Adore You, Golden, or Watermelon Sugar again. You can tell that this was sent in January. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, that's rough. In March, but he never performs. See, he yeah. never performs them again is like rough. Mm -hmm. I would say, no, I wouldn't no. because I think that we're going to get his next album not imminently but like not so far away mm -hmm. that i'm willing to wait and i don't feel the need to press this at this time but it is it's uh, that's a hard one because it's no guarantee that he will perform those again anyway so it's like yeah. we might end up waiting and then we, <laughs> this scenario ends up bearing out anyway but what about you uh yeah no i i don't i don't think that i can handle the album dropping in march anyway so no, <laughs> no, uh, I don't press that button. Okay, Key, what do you have for me? All right, well, the manifesting adds a whole new element to this, so I, I oh, pray God. that this does not occur, but would you press the button if Harry flubs a line in his performance but wins an award? Uh, no, because if he flubs, I'll never hear the fucking end of it. No, <laughs> no. Oh, if he, if social he, media is a hellscape. If he loses but he does an amazing performance, then people can complain about how he was snubbed for the yes. rest of all time. That's a much better point to be positioned from, yeah. Right. But if he wins and he sucked, like even if it was a little bit, then people can yell about how he was undeserving for the rest of all time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. As much as I would like to see him win an award, I think that that's the objectively correct answer. Mm -hmm. I'm wise, I'm smart. Okay. <laughs> Wrapping up our little game. This this one, the imagination of some people. Okay, so would you press the button if Harry performs medicine at an event that's being professionally recorded, but he has to perform it with One Direction in their 2012 outfits? <laughs> Wait, so... Are the rest of One Direction in their 2012 outfits, or is he also in one of his? They're they're one accompanying him, and they're all in there. <laughs> he's singing it, singing medicine with One Direction, and they're all dressed like it's 2012. Oh god! And it's being, you know what? And I would do it. Professionally recorded. Yeah, I would press it. I, that would okay. The problem is, is that there there be career implications with this that I don't like. Like mm. like the general public <laughs> and like critics. This is a real step backwards. So I don't thinking about this intelligently from a career perspective. I don't want this for him, and I would not press the button. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind if it was a if it was medicine, and then like Zane came in on it. Like that'd be great. Like I want Liam to sing that. medicine. Oh my god, what if Liam sang a cover of medicine? I wouldn't put it past him on, a, on one of his live streams. I can totally see him doing a cover of it. Oh my god, what if he tried to make a straight cover of medicine? <laughs> Uh, well, you've just manifested it, so congratulations. <laughs> no! Oh, my, what would the line be? It would be, uh, he would just change it to the girls and the girls are in. I miss Rhett. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's terrible. Or, like, or like, what if he, like, made, he tried to, he tried to make it, like, seem good, like, he was, like, both of my girls are in, I mess around oh, with them, so he's, don't like, manifest he's, like, that. I don't want it. <laughs> It would be funny, though. I would laugh. It would be funny. Uh, I don't know if I could envision him singing that passionately about you know, that subject matter, but uh, we'll we'll see. Uh, he could surprise me. Thank you, listener, for submitting that. that <sighs> yes, thank you. That's a, to me that's personally. <laughs> very funny, and you see why we had to save this. Like I saw it, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And so yes, very much. Um, and so now I think that we can move into our second to last segment a segment we like to call must get rid of toxic in community where we dig up some real gems online <laughs> uh and try to figure out where are people coming from why are they saying this why is this happening to me so this happened the day that david dawson's casting 
was released. Uh, people were having a real discourse field day on Tumblr, and there were many things that many of our listeners would expect, and perhaps some things that they would not expect. And since I want everybody who listens to our podcast to only expect the unexpected, I chose a take that was so surprising that I <laughs> ended up sharing it with one of my friends who isn't even a Harry, I said, you have to see what somebody posted online. Uh, so they start off strong with, I don't have time to have discourse today, but so clearly you have time to have like a little bit of discourse, right? So <laughs> just thinking about how number one reason why people didn't want Harry to do <laughs> The Little Mermaid was because it was a Disney production. <laughs> So maybe, maybe perhaps you think that they're going to get in one direction, but they're not going there. Okay. So, uh, but when he does a movie with Amazon, it's silence. Gray sent this to me and I just was like, what? What? Like, <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Like, was he... I just not, I, like, I don't know if I was on social media. Like, I don't know if I was on Harry Twitter when the Little Mermaid stuff happened, but like if people actually like I, I like I'm just in shock that the number one reason that somebody would have a perception <laughs> that the number one reason that people didn't want Harry to do the Little Mermaid was because it was, it was because a Disney. Because it's movie. Disney. Because like, it's Disney Studios. I just like that has to be a misinterpretation of what people were saying, right? Because I the the idea that that's would be the reason people didn't want him to do it is like so it's, it's so expanding to me. <laughs> it's so funny because you would think like the first part of the sentence, it doesn't seem like they're talking about Disney Studios. It seems like you wouldn't want to do The Little Mermaid because it was a Disney production. So you would think that like logically, like they would end up talking about, but when he like, for example, but when he wants to do the Eternals, it's silence. Like uh, at least, yeah. at least that would be a discourse that would like, I could I could believe lived in someone's brain. I'm just so agog that this lives in someone's brain. <laughs> I do. I, I I find so interesting the different standards that people apply in their own heads to the things that they're a fan of and the people that they're fans of. I think like again, obviously, we start out the show by saying that we didn't like capitalism. I'm not Disney's biggest fan, and I'm not oh, Amazon's no. biggest fan, but. It would be interesting if Harry was the most progressive actor in Hollywood and decided that he had a moral objection to working with the Disney company. I would be, that would be a very unexpected and interesting public stance for him to take. Also. It would be very, it would be very sexy. I mean, like, listen. Oh, it, like, it would be, it would be. It would be so sexy, but it's, it's not going to happen. It's so outside the realm of what it would even, I would even conceive as like a possible stance for anyone, and especially him to take that I just, it's like so interesting to me that this was a post that exists. I won't even boycott the Disney company. I can't expect Harry Styles to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, so that's that take. Uh, so now we're going to move into our outro. So, Key, are you looking forward to non-Harry things, book, movie, TV, Rex? So I know I just said that I don't like <laughs> capitalism and that I am not the Disney company's biggest fan, but I am a shill and I am self-contradictory and... And he is Disney Company's biggest fan. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not, week. but I, I'm sorry, okay? I just like Marvel, and I it's a pandemic, and we all need things in our lives. And so I've been watching some Marvel movies, which will come as a shock to no one. And oh, we've been watching them together. Yes, yes, and that's been very fun. So we've been yes. revisiting some of my favorites. So we watch Black Panther together. Um, we don't live close to each other. So over, <laughs> we text yeah. as we watch. Um, and... And Spider-Man Homecoming and Captain America the Winter Soldier, which is the most recent one we watch, which I think is really good and I would recommend to anybody. Um, this is like, again, every every time we do this section of the podcast, it's like me giving the coldest takes, like this thing <laughs> that everybody knew was good five years ago is like something that I'm recommending, but I'm it's still doing it's that. Okay. So, no, I think it's, yeah. it's so funny. You, you have to understand the like fire of Keith's passion because Keith's <laughs> gotten me to watch three long movies. And like, wh when's the timeline of this? Like, it's like been like two. We watch them weeks. like every two days, basically for the past. Every two days. Week. That's an impressive thing to get me to do is to watch a Marvel movie every two days. So this is the intensity of Key's passion for Marvel right now. 
He's going to leave me alone and harry him. (laughs) I get really into stuff. And this is kind of like my rationale for even putting this section of the podcast in the podcast is like, I am a very singular person and I get like really deeply into things and then I move on. And some of them last a long time, like Harry Styles, which is why this podcast is sustainable. But some of them, you know, I just get really deep into something and then I drop it and then I, I pick it up again as time goes on. So this is the, the listeners. You're just gonna handle my my ins and outs and my obsessions and my fixations as time goes on. And that has been the story of this week. It's amazing because he is nocturnal. I often will like wake up to Marvel DMs. <laughs> <laughs> me at four in the morning. Like, let me talk about the historical implications and the celebrity iconography of Steve Rogers. And I love it, man. I, I, I love waking up to, oh, I'm so pretty. I, I read it right before I take a shower while I make my coffee. It's great. <laughs> um, I am looking forward to, speaking of Marvel, I'm looking forward to that like Falcon, Falcon and Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Yeah, I think that's going to be really fun. Um, outside of, I'm trying to think of like outside of the Marvel movies that Key and I have been sharing what I've, gotten up to um i feel like i oh my god i'm so all i have wanted to do for like weeks has been listen to mika's performance at he did um i I don't think i've talked about this on the podcast yet but mika is this uh european gay singer who i love so much and he did a live performance recently at oh god this is french i'm gonna go for it at (laughs) At L'Opera Royale de Versailles. That was so bad. Uh, doing my best. And he did this. And I, so I, I saw him talk about it on his Instagram before it was happening. And I was like, oh, I wish I could be there and hear it. And then he like dropped it. He was like, it's coming. And I was like, oh, what? He recorded it? And uh, so I just, I'm so obsessed. It's just like, it's it's kind of like a greatest hits of Mika, but also like, there's like definitely some deep cuts in there. <clears throat> and if you're not familiar with Mika at all, then probably most of these songs would be unfamiliar to you. But yeah, his, his most recent album, his live recording, it's just, oh, it's so, it's just so gorgeous. I love to walk around listening to it and yeah, amazing. I'm obsessed with him. So yeah, that's that's definitely something that I've been enjoying that's been bringing me joy. Yeah, uh, yeah. anything that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that little TV show. And I don't know, the springtime. Uh, I'm getting a little spring fever. So I think I'm going to take us out of here. Um, Key, do you want to do our little outro? You can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and rate our podcast there. We'd so appreciate it. And yeah, you can contact us at weblimeharrystyles at gmail.com. On Twitter and Tumblr, we can be found at harrystylespod. You can follow us there or DM us there if you have any suggestions. Subscribe to us on your preferred podcast host to become notified of our next episode. And we'll be talking about the Grammys. We'll be talking about the Grammys. Yes. We're going to do all the stuff that we predicted in this episode and seeing if our and your predictions are accurate. So I'm very much looking forward to doing that. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.